Mount St. Helens has seen an increase in earthquake activity with nearly 350 quakes over the last several months. Now, scientists are saying this is part of the volcano's recharging process. Imagine standing at the base of a towering volcano, knowing it holds the power to reshape the earth in an instant. It has been 44 years since the eruption of Mount St. Helens, a disaster that forever altered the Pacific Northwest. On May 18, 1980, this iconic stratovolcano exploded in one of the most devastating eruptions in U.S. history, leaving behind a barren, ash-covered wasteland. Yet, even now, Mount St. Helens continues to astonish scientists, revealing secrets buried deep beneath its surface that could change everything we thought we knew about its explosive history and its future. Could the mountain's silent years be a prelude to another extraordinary chapter? A disaster in the making. In the months leading up to the 1980 eruption, Mount St. Helens sent out subtle but ominous warnings that something extraordinary was about to happen. A series of small earthquakes began in March, with intensity and frequency increasing steadily over the weeks. By April, steam explosions and fumaroles appeared, venting gases from deep within the earth. Geologists observed the formation of a growing bulge on the northern flank of the volcano, caused by magma pushing upward which expanded at an alarming rate of up to five feet per day. On May 18th, a magnitude 5.1 earthquake struck, triggering the largest landslide ever recorded. This catastrophic event released the pressure within the volcano, causing a violent lateral blast that flattened 230 square miles of forest in just minutes. The explosion was so powerful that it hurled rock, gas, and ash at speeds exceeding 300 miles per hour, devastating everything in its path. The ash cloud reached 15 miles into the atmosphere, disrupting air travel and blanketing cities in darkness. For months after the eruption, the region was a desolate wasteland. Rivers were clogged with debris, wildlife disappeared, and the once vibrant forests were reduced to a gray expanse of lifeless ash. Yet despite the quiet that followed, Mount St. Helens continued to smolder, hinting at the unpredictable power still lying beneath the surface. Recent scientific discoveries suggest that the volcano's slumber might be ending, raising questions about what the future holds for this restless giant. Signs of renewed activity. After decades of apparent calm, Mount St. Helens is once again stirring, signaling that its volcanic system is far from dormant. Deep beneath the surface, clusters of small, shallow earthquakes, called earthquake swarms, have been recorded with increasing frequency. While these microquakes are typically low in magnitude, they are significant indicators of magma movement as they result from rock fracturing under immense pressure. Satellite imagery has also revealed subtle but measurable changes in the landscape surrounding the volcano. Ground deformation, such as slight uplifts and tilting, suggests that magma is accumulating in the chamber below, exerting pressure on the Earth's crust. Scientists are closely monitoring these shifts using advanced tools like GPS stations and synthetic aperture radar, which can detect even millimeter scale movements. Adding to the concern is a noticeable change in the volcano's gas emissions. Increased levels of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, gases typically released as magma rises, have been detected near the crater. These emissions provide crucial clues about the depth and activity of the magma chamber. The composition and volume of the gases hint that magma is rising closer to the surface, increasing the potential for future activity. While these signs don't guarantee an imminent eruption, they highlight the dynamic nature of Mount St. Helens. The combination of seismic activity, ground deformation, and gas release paints a clear picture. The volcano is recharging, and its next chapter may already be in motion. Scientists remain vigilant, using every tool at their disposal to understand what might come next. The volcano recharges. The current activity at Mount St. Helens is part of a natural and often lengthy process known as the recharging phase. During this time, magma from deep reservoirs slowly ascends through the Earth's crust accumulating in the magma chamber beneath the volcano. This gradual buildup of molten rock, along with gases and heat, can take years 
or even decades, creating the conditions necessary for a future eruption. Scientists compare this process to filling a pressurized system. As magma accumulates, it exerts pressure on the surrounding rock, causing stress fractures and ground deformation. This pressure often manifests in telltale signs such as earthquake swarms, shifts in the landscape, and increased gas emissions, all of which have been observed Mount St. Helens in recent years. Importantly, this phase does not mean that an eruption is imminent. Many volcanoes spend decades in a state of recharging without erupting, and Mount St. Helens is no exception. However, the ongoing activity serves as a stark reminder of the volcano's dynamic and unpredictable nature. What makes this phase particularly significant is how it offers scientists a window into the internal workings of the volcano. By studying the patterns of magma movement, gas release, and ground changes, researchers gain valuable insights into the life cycle of volcanic systems. This knowledge not only helps predict future activity, but also enhances global understanding of how volcanoes operate, ensuring better preparedness for when nature's power inevitably erupts again. What if it erupts again? If Mount St. Helens were to erupt again, the consequences for the surrounding landscape could be profound. The volcano's history suggests a range of possible scenarios, from smaller, effusive eruptions to massive, explosive events similar to the 1980 disaster. An explosive eruption could hurl ash high into the atmosphere, trigger pyroclastic flows, and devastate miles of forest, while lahars, volcanic mudflows, could sweep down river valleys, threatening infrastructure and communities far beyond the mountain's immediate vicinity. The scale of destruction would undoubtedly disrupt the delicate balance of life that has been restored since the last major eruption. Forests that have regrown over decades would be obliterated and wildlife would once again face displacement or loss. Rivers, now teeming with fish, could be choked with debris and fertile soil might be buried under layers of ash. Yet, the answer to this grim possibility lies in the remarkable resilience of nature and the lessons we've learned from the past. Following the 1980 eruption, life began returning to the barren landscape within months. Hardy plants like lupines took root in the nutrient-poor ash, paving the way for other species. Pocket gophers mixed nutrient-rich soil with volcanic deposits, creating conditions for grasses and shrubs to grow. Over time, ecosystems rebuilt themselves, demonstrating an extraordinary ability to recover from catastrophe. This resilience reminds us that even in the face of devastating eruptions, recovery is not only possible, but inevitable. By understanding the processes of destruction and renewal, we can better prepare for future eruptions, ensuring that human communities and ecosystems alike can weather the volcano's unpredictable power. Mount St. Helens may erupt again, but history has shown that both nature and humanity have the strength to rebuild. Nature's unlikely heroes. The eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 obliterated nearly everything in its path, transforming the vibrant landscape into a barren, ash-covered wasteland. Yet, even in the face of such devastation, life found a way to return, often in the most unexpected ways. Within months, hardy lupines became the first pioneers, sprouting through the ash and enriching the soil with nitrogen drawn from the air. These resilient plants paved the way for other vegetation to take root in the inhospitable environment. One of the most surprising contributors to the recovery was the pocket gopher. These small but industrious creatures burrowed tirelessly beneath the ash, mixing nutrient-rich earth with volcanic debris. In doing so, they not only aerated the soil, but also created sheltered pockets where seeds could germinate and fungi could thrive. Their tunnels became microhabitats, attracting insects and laying the foundation for a burgeoning ecosystem. As plants reclaimed the land, they attracted more wildlife. Birds returned to nest in the recovering forest, while mammals ventured back to forage. Rivers cleared of debris began to teem with fish once more, and insects played their role in pollination, 
and decomposition. The interplay of these species transformed Mount St. Helens from a gray wasteland into a thriving biodiverse ecosystem. Fast forward to today, and the area surrounding the volcano is alive with activity. Towering trees shade the ground, wildlife roams freely, and vibrant rivers flow through landscapes that were once lifeless. This recovery offers a profound lesson. Even in the aftermath of catastrophe, nature has an extraordinary capacity to heal. If Mount St. Helens were to erupt again, the process of renewal would likely begin anew. While destruction is inevitable, so too is the resilience of life. The story of Mount St. Helens demonstrates that even in the face of immense challenges, ecosystems can rebuild, reminding us of the enduring power of nature to adapt and thrive. Volcanic Tales of the Tropics What about volcanoes in tropical regions? Could the same cycle of destruction and renewal seen at Mount St. Helens play out in the lush, humid climates of the tropics? The story of Mount Tambora a tropical volcano in Indonesia offers a fascinating glimpse into how ecosystems recover from even the most catastrophic eruptions. In 1815, Mount Tambora erupted with unimaginable force, becoming the most powerful volcanic event in recorded history. The eruption sent vast amounts of ash and gases into the atmosphere, blocking sunlight and altering global weather patterns. This led to the infamous Year Without a Summer, where crop failures, famine, and societal upheaval spread across the globe. Communities near the volcano were completely destroyed, leaving a barren and desolate landscape in the aftermath. Despite the scale of the devastation, Tambora's tropical setting eventually transformed its scarred terrain. The combination of abundant rainfall, warm temperatures, and high biodiversity accelerated the recovery process. Within a few decades, the volcanic slopes that had been stripped bare were reclaimed by dense jungles. Tropical plants, adapted to survive and thrive in challenging conditions, quickly took root in the nutrient-rich volcanic soil. Seeds carried by birds, wind, and water began to populate the landscape, while insects and small animals followed, building the foundations of a new ecosystem. Today, Tambora's caldera is home to a serene lake surrounded by a thriving forest. The tropical environment, with its unmatched biodiversity, facilitated a rapid and remarkable recovery. This recovery mirrors the resilience seen at Mount St. Helens, though the tropical setting brought unique advantages, while the arid conditions around St. Helens slowed the return of life. Tambora's lush environment allowed vegetation and wildlife to re-establish more quickly. These contrasting stories reveal how ecosystems adapt to volcanic devastation, shaped by the characteristics of their environments. Could the lessons from Tambora's recovery inform how we approach restoration in other regions? The incredible rebound of tropical ecosystems shows the power of biodiversity and natural regeneration, offering insights into how even the most damaged landscapes can one day thrive again. The role of tropical biodiversity. In the decades after Mount Tambora's catastrophic eruption, the once barren volcanic slopes underwent a remarkable transformation. Dense jungles reclaimed the devastated terrain, creating an entirely new ecosystem where life had seemed impossible. Today, Tambora's caldera is a tranquil lake surrounded by lush forests teeming with diverse species. The speed and extent of this recovery were largely due to the unique advantages of the tropical climate. The abundant rainfall and constant sunlight, characteristic of tropical regions, created the perfect conditions for rapid regeneration. Lessons for the future. Could the incredible recoveries seen in tropical volcanic regions provide a blueprint for managing volcanic disasters in other parts of the world? Absolutely. The resilience demonstrated by ecosystems like Mount Tambora offers valuable insights that extend far beyond the tropics, revealing universal principles of recovery and regeneration. By studying how biodiversity and environmental conditions influence the pace of recovery, scientists have begun to identify key factors that make ecosystems more resilient. For example, the rapid regrowth of tropical forests after Tambora's eruption highlights the importance of soil fertility and the presence of adaptable plant and animal species. 
These lessons can inform reforestation efforts in areas affected by deforestation, wildfires, or volcanic activity, where restoring ecological balance is critical. Additionally, the role of keystone species like the pocket gophers at Mount St. Helens or pioneering plants in tropical regions underscores the importance of reintroducing species that can facilitate recovery. These species help rebuild soil health, stabilize landscapes, and create habitats for other organisms, making them essential for jump-starting regeneration in damaged environments. The principles derived from tropical recoveries also have broader implications for ecological restoration and climate change mitigation. By understanding how ecosystems naturally adapt and rebuild after disturbances, scientists can design more effective strategies to rehabilitate degraded lands. This might include selecting native plant species that thrive in challenging conditions, encouraging natural rewilding processes, or leveraging biodiversity to enhance ecosystem resilience. The recovery of tropical volcanic landscapes reminds us that nature's ability to heal is profound, but it often requires the right conditions and minimal human interference. As the planet faces increasing environmental challenges, the lessons learned from these tropical recoveries could serve as a roadmap for restoring balance to ecosystems around the world. Whether rebuilding forests, restoring habitats, or mitigating the effects of climate change, the principles of resilience and regeneration hold the promise of a more sustainable future. A reminder of nature's power. Both Mount St. Helens and tropical volcanoes like Tambora remind us of nature's incredible power to destroy and create. They challenge us to think not only about survival, but also about renewal. What other volcanic landscapes might hold the keys to understanding the delicate balance between destruction and rebirth? As we continue to explore these stories, one thing is certain. Volcanoes are not just agents of devastation, but also engines of renewal, shaping the earth and life in ways we are only beginning to comprehend. If you enjoyed this exploration of volcanic wonders and the resilience of nature, don't forget to leave a comment with your thoughts or questions. We'd love to hear what topics or stories you'd like us to dive into next. And remember to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content about the mysteries of science, nature, and the incredible forces that shape our world.